Hello! Today I'm uh, in my Modlex again uh, and there's a reason for that because today I will test driving with a mobile home, a caravan. It weighs about 1.3 tons and um, in Norway you cannot drive higher than uh, 80 kilometers an hour when you have a trailer attached with brakes. 60 without <laughs> so um, and uh, another reason to do a baseline today is because it's uh, fairly cold it's not that cold it's nine degrees and I don't want um, to make any assumptions on the extra um, towing wh how much the extra towing um, or consumption when towing will be uh, so uh, I also preheated the battery to uh, the normal Tesla heats it to 21 degrees. It's been dropping a little bit now. Uh, also, the, the car is fully, or not fully charged. I charge it to 80%. Uh, that's enough. I will do the baseline test now. It's uh, quite nice weather. Uh, it's lunchtime, so I'm using my lunch for this. But uh, the main test will be later today after work. Uh, in in a few hours but i don't think the conditions will change too much we'll see i'm uh, back at the starting position and um, look at this consumption if we can see it here in the sun 168 watt hours per kilometer that's insane actually the last time this car was tested was um, in the summer and it got 177 watt hours per kilometer but I th maybe the difference is that the winter tires are more efficient because now I have 19 inch Hakkapalitta R3 SUVs uh, studless winter tires the summer tires are 20 inch Michelin Pilot Sport 3 which is are a bit um, flatter and wider I think more contact so maybe that's the reason but uh, 168 watt hour per kilometer, uh, that means with uh, last time when I tested the remaining battery capacity, I got to 87 kilowatt hours uh, extractable. And if I divide that by 168, I get almost 520 kilometers. Uh, that's pretty good range for that speed. Anyway, the baseline is set 168 watt hour per kilometer. Uh, I think the Caron is going to add a lot to that. So here it is, 1.3 tons of uh, Caron. And um, the next step is to get to the starting point of um, the test and see how it compares with the 168 that we had earlier today. The wind has picked up a bit, so I hope it's not going to affect it too much, but I don't think so. I'm also going to do a rolling start, sort of, uh, because I don't want to stop with this thing on top of that bridge. Uh, I want, I, I'm going to start rolling and then finish rolling. Not that fast, so it shouldn't affect too much either. But uh, let's get going. So I'm uh, rapidly approaching the area where I usually start. And I'm just going to reset, scan my Tesla here. Uh, while driving, because I don't really want to start and stop with this thing on. Um, and then I'm gonna check the consumption when I reach this point again on the way back. But on the other side of the road, of course. That way I will see... Um, hopefully see the, the consumption here. So, uh, let me just uh, reset. reset trip there it's uh, reset and now I know uh, yeah I know where to take the measurement on the way back here is the bridge coming up where I usually start the consumption runs so this time I'm just gonna run under it Now I'm approaching the halfway mark. Uh, this is Kirelan, where I usually turn around. 
and the consumption is uh, it's about double which is a bit less than uh, I expected I was imagining up in the four five hundreds maybe so um, so far so good yeah 324 watt hours per kilometer so far let's uh, turn around and uh, see what it is at the end point so now we're approaching the end of the test run and I can see the consumption is about 335 watt hours per kilometer that means the effective range uh, it, it's 9 degrees Celsius by the way so it's fairly cold so the effective range of uh, this car uh, with the degradation it has and with a caravan like this is about 250 260 kilometers uh, which is pretty good it's actually usable <laughs> so um, there's that uh, now we are going to drive uh, and park it up through the inland of Norway it's not too far but it's going to be uphill and uh, smaller roads so the consumption will most likely skyrocket uh, we'll see about that right uh, almost there uh, the consumption uh, although you can't see the consumption right now I have a different screen up the consumption is uh, the same so it's around 330 to 340 and that surprises me because we have uh, gone up quite a bit in elevation uh, this place is uh, a few hundred meters above sea level uh, or above where we started uh, you can also see the battery temperature has risen quite a bit it's uh, 30 degrees it's got it's working a bit harder now you can see up hills like this right now i'm using uh, almost a hundred kilowatts of power to get up here so uh, car is using a bit more energy uh, it's kind of interesting to see it in real time as well but the funny funny thing is that uh, i'm still around the consumption of an e-tron uh, going at highway speed without any trailer at all <laughs> so yeah um, there's that uh, not that far left so I'll guess I'll uh, recap once uh, we arrive in a few minutes so 339 watt hours per kilometer uh, we have arrived at the destination but this consumption is not really bad when uh, considering the load uh, we have pulled today. Uh, I'm just waiting for the truck in front of me to move before I can park the trailer. But um, that's pretty good. Uh, the state of charge is now 39%. When I hooked on the trailer, the uh, state of charge was 76%. But I drove quite a bit before um, before starting scan my Tesla. So, uh, but still, we have used maybe forty percent of the battery and driven a bit over hundred kilometers. So that checks up as well. Anyway, uh, that is it for today. Uh, I had fun pulling this uh, thing. I hope uh, it was informative. Uh, it's not that far-fetched of a use case to pull a, a trailer with a Modlex. So th it's definitely possible to get around uh, with the density of the superchargers. So t 200 kilometers between superchargers and then you're set. Because you don't want to fill it all the way up and uh, drain it all the way down. But um, yeah, good times. <laughs>